Sometimes it feels like we're sleepwalking through our lives. We get all caught up in the demands of the day, riveted to our phones, and we forget to look up and look around and see all of the beautiful nuances happening around us all the time. Innovation hinges on our ability to see things differently, breaking boundaries and looking between the lines in an effort to solve some of the world's greatest challenges. Our goal isn't to get more screens into people's hands. Our goal is to amplify the experience that people have in real life. We're constantly fusing together art, science, and technology to take on some of the greatest challenges in our lifetime. We're discovering so many new ways to elevate people's awareness through the experiences that we're building to make us more conscious of our environment, more fully awake in this world. So much of our work starts off with one simple question. What if? What if we could augment our bodies to detect and sense the invisible realms around us? like, for instance, UV or carbon monoxide. What might that look like? What might that experience be like? So let's consider pollution. Pollution is largely unseen. And while it's happening all around us, we have no idea of the actual health impacts it's causing us in our daily lives. It's that what if question that actually led us to develop colorimetric makeup and hair color pigments that change color based on the intensity of the UV index. That's not magic, that's chemistry. But what if we could actually hear them as well? This past year, we started something called the Urban Innovation Initiative. It's a cross-disciplinary effort that bridges together engineers, designers, and researchers to tackle air quality. And we developed hyper-local air quality sensors to detect local air quality in real time. Now, what if we could take those signals and augment something in our everyday life, for instance, wind chimes? If the air quality is good, you might hear major chords, and it sounds beautiful. But if it isn't, you might hear minor chords, something discordant, something that disturbs you. This is Project Eclipse. We can detect four kinds of gases, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, ozone, and carbon monoxide. In addition, we have a particle sensing box that detects anything from pollens to smoke, and it sends data right to the cloud. And this enables people in their own neighborhoods to know what's going on with the air quality around them at a hyper-local level. Let's talk about Project Florence. What if we could talk to our plants? How might that change our relationship with the natural world? What would they say? How would they respond to us? One of the artists that we actually worked with in our residence program is Helena Steiner. And Helena had this idea of actually elevating plant signals and translating our language into plant language. Let me explain. The way that Florence works is you can type something to the plant. So for instance, you could type something like, good morning, how are you? And we use a natural language processing algorithm to infer the sentiment of what you're texting to the plant. We take that sentiment, whether it's positive or negative, we translate that into a red light or a blue light, which the plant will then have an electrochemical response to. In addition to that, we augment the plants with sensors that infer her state of moisture or dryness, or if she's too hot or too cold, and we combine all those things together to have her actually print out a response. Florence is just initially a whimsical piece of art, but this actually might have real-world implications. How might we grow our food in the future? Perhaps we will need to augment our crops to know in real time if they're healthy or not. We're talking about very real solutions to global challenges. One of the examples of embedding sensing and actuating capabilities into our fabrics is something we call lightwear. So instead of sitting behind a light box, 
you're actually immersed in wearing a beautiful scarf of blue light. So our question was, how could we create an easy, plug and play platform for people to build these experiences on top of. So we used Microsoft MakeCode that enables anyone, even like fashion designers, to plug and play their own components into their garments. So technical expertise is no longer a constraint. Now we can provide these kind of creative tools that enable them to go as far out as their imagination will take them. Our explorations with data-driven technologies have now led us to one of our most ambitious creative collaborations. We call her Ada. Ada is our latest creative collaboration with Jenny Savin Studios. And Ada is incredibly disruptive. Ada is comprised of over 850 uniquely 3D printed nylon parts that we call nodes. And she's assembled with fiberglass rods and digitally knitted cones to create one big ethereal piece, almost like a collective mind or heartbeat that lives in our atrium. In order to get Ada to actually activate, we've installed different camera stations around the building, camera stations that actually can detect expressions, and we translate those expressions into color. So now, Ada can swirl with color and pattern and infer the different expressions and activities going on inside the building. Ada becomes almost our collective mind because Ada infers a future in which our architecture and the buildings and the environment that we live in actually responds to us in real time. So think of it this way. Every one of us is like those uniquely printed 3D nodes. We all have our quirky angles. But when we come together and we fit just right, we create something supernatural, something beyond our mundane selves. The way we see it, art inspires us to come together, bridges us back to our humanity. And when we incorporate it into our technology, we elevate this to the next level. So most of the things that we create will never become products. And they're just not meant to. Our number one goal is to inspire. So whether it's color changing hair or augmented wind chimes that enable us to hear air quality or even talking plants, all of these things are coming together to push a new narrative forward, a narrative that actually brings art into the conversation and expands our horizons and it pushes us into the next frontier. And maybe someone who's watching this right now will be inspired to go out and push something meaningful and profound into the world.